So I'd like to ask everyone to switch off, switch on the camera because we are only few people, so it's better to see each other. And um, maybe we start with the small to the table in to know who is who. Would it work for all of you? I hope. Very nice cat. Thank you. Yeah, he's been, he's been here all the past couple of days enjoying the conference. <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful. I have also, uh, yeah, I, I have many cats, but one is sitting all the time in the office. So he's the director of the company. <laughs> At this moment, is out. So are we only three here, or do we have Holly? Or maybe we start with the introduction. Yeah. So Alexandra, you were first. Maybe you go first. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a research data specialist at the University of Melbourne. And I work on a team called the Data Analytics Platform. Um, and we work with Indigenous data in some select project. Um, and I was really interested in um, just towards the end of um, the session, we just had um, talking about sensitive data. Um, shout out to the session, like two sessions from now, which is the sensitive data interest group. Um, but, the, but we are thinking very deeply about things that have been covered today. So that's who I am. Mm -hmm. So Chris, I can I can uh, see that. Yeah, morning everyone. So uh, Chris Emerson, uh, work at Newcastle University as a research data manager. Uh, so at Newcastle University, we try and map on quite closely to the sustainable development goals. So there's a lot of research globally. So I'm particularly keen to see how I can support the researchers on the fair principles, but also now the care principles in terms of not doing the kind of colonialism, just taking all the data out, but working in collaboration. So keen to learn and particularly on the ethics side of things, which might be a bit of a, a quick win on this area. Okay. So I see Holly, maybe Holly, you are then the next to use. Uh, yeah, morning everyone. Um, it's still early in the UK for me anyway, so I had to just take off my dressing gown. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm the research data management officer at the University of Westminster. Um, and I also sit on the ethics board at Westminster as well. Um, oh, so, th yeah, thinking very much about how we can embed care principles um, in the ethics process. So as part of a criteria by which we might review a proposal for a research project. Um, and also because we're in the process of building a digital repository for research data as well. Um, so how can we think about that? Um, and especially in the UK, Joy, um, no, Natalie in Ireland mentioned in the UK contact as well as overseas research where we might want to think about the care principles we also have work with the gypsy roma traveler community in the uk as well where the care principles would would come in as well okay i see i see uh, other people uh, without the camera uh, so linda lawrence joy yeah uh, please feel free. you have been decided to a small tour the top so just say a few few words who you are why are you interested to this ethic Anyone wish to speak? <clears throat> or maybe maybe you can write it to the chat, yeah, if you do not wish to show up, yeah. So just maybe repeat that, that, uh, that I'm in the RDA Council. I'm not a data specialist, I'm a former politician, MEP, work, uh, member of the European Parliament for, for 10 years. Uh, and this is how I started to work uh, on data and uh, on the data issues and in the RDA. And of course, my interest is more policy poli policy making uh, regarding uh, around the data than anything else. But I love to work uh, in the Fed Data Maturity working, working Group as a chair. And it was really a joy to work with the care, care people. So I feel now very reasonable about it. And I'm in the SDG interest group. So I, I think that it's important that we Take it, take it forward, but I'd like to get the discussion with you around um, around these uh, three principles uh, within the care principle, which I feel on one side very nice, on the other side still very generic and very abstract. So uh, it will be very difficult to apply to the institutions without further clarification or further uh, breakdown uh, to concrete action and concrete policies with the with the KPIs, with the measurements. Yeah, that uh, it. In that form, it's very difficult to use and reinforce and um, enforce the, the application of it. 
uh, and uh, maybe um, maybe when we discuss the ethics for me one of the main issue is that uh, which which Shelley, by the way said that the repositories are responsible for the community but is it really true uh, in my view there are researchers now moving around the world so who is your community the community who is directly served or the global community who is visiting from anywhere uh, to pick up the data and I think that it makes a big difference that how you define the community. Uh, so I just wanted to to give these ideas out. We didn't decide it how go concretely with the with the issues, uh, but I think that what uh, Holly said about uh, the uh, the ethical the ethical papers, ethical rules of the of the institutions, this can be can be one way that how we can include care to those ethical papers, or we can go from the from the three points to discuss that how we can make them more concrete. So it's up to you. I'm waiting for your ideas that how you wish to go through the process. I Any guess um, I, I could just say that I agree with you. I think it's the concrete actions that we kind of need to focus on and. You know, I, I really see that repositories have a role to play in informing data reuse in an ethical way and, and making sure that the care principles are reflected back in that angle. But so much of it really depends on researchers being aware of what they're collecting and how they're intending to use data in the first place. So I think we, we really need to get this all joined up throughout the life cycle. Um, to come back to your point about policy, um, certainly, I think, yes, funders and people who support research to take place, whether it's, you know, funders or even institutions, um, we have lots of processes in place. So we've got ethics reviews and all sorts of things that people have to do as standard activity when you're planning new research. So I just think we need to review those, um, see where we can really kind of expand them out to maybe include care where it makes sense. I'm not, you know, wherever we can embrace into existing processes would be better than trying to make it a separate new thing that people feel is completely uh, disjoined from everything else. So I think there's a, a, an action on all of us to kind of look at what we're doing already and where we can start to draw in the care principles and really to just get this started to be in the radar from the, the very outset of research. Thank you. Thank you. So I just summarized because the notes, so not only reuse, but also the use over the life cycle uh, and uh, we add to the ethical, uh, the ethical reviews, ethical rules for the existing ones and to think of the new ones on that way. Yeah, just a summary. So, so maybe, maybe we, we, we if if you do not um, if you do not mind, maybe we can go through the three principles. Yeah, one is for minimizing the harm and maximizing the benefit. Uh, the second one for justice. Yeah, that uh, do they reserve the recognition? Do they reserve some reimbursement? What what does it mean for justice and for the future use, which is very much about the data immediate use and uh, for yeah for the uh, for the longer time archives and so on so forth. So yeah, maybe let's. Uh, Let's discuss by one after one. Yeah. So, so can we start with the minimizing harm and maximizing benefit? Any ideas around this? That how how you understand those that that sentence? And maybe you know, I, my idea was to start. Is it a policy issue or is it a technical? Uh, issue which we have to think about that principle or both so both both okay yeah because it, i suppose it comes in at the whole or like joy was saying it's every aspect of the research data life cycle because you need to think about purpose of the research which is a methodological question like what what is the purpose of the research in terms of maximizing benefit maximizing benefit for whom um through to sharing the data who is going to benefit from the sharing of the data if that's what you want to achieve 
Yeah, I would completely agree. And I think, you know, going back to, uh, we had IDCC, I'm not sure how many people were at that just before the RDA plenary, but we had a, a keynote um, and the keynote really kind of drew us to thinking about ownership of data and cultural, you know, there was a lot of questions about this. And I think, you know, at the early stages, when you're thinking about who benefits, and, and how they benefit it, you, you have to think who's also, the harm question kind of comes into that as well. So if you are benefiting somebody, are you indirectly harming somebody else? So a lot of this stuff I really think isn't something you're naturally predisposed to thinking about. You know, if you're going through your standards ethics, ethics process, a lot of these things maybe don't jump into um, your thought process. So I think it's just really trying to make people aware and, and to try and think of things in a different perspective than they're, they're, they're used to. And that's, that's difficult to do. So I think if that is gonna be something that happens, uh, we would need to really engage with the ethics review board processes and make sure the people who run those are aware of this and understand the right kinds of questions to ask and how to support it. Uh, I, I I like that one that you said that it, uh, do I understand it well? I just asked because the notes that, that it's easy when you know uh, what, uh, what is your, uh, what, what, it, it's easy when you know that whom you are doing that, but you don't necessarily know uh, all the, all the communities you might harm or benefit at the, at the very beginning without the good planning. Yeah, that's what you said. I, I think the data management planning is the logical place to start to think about some of these things because we already, you know, ask people what kind of stuff will you collect and how are you going to do it? Are there any ethical things that you have to think about? So there, there's already kind of the high level questions that people need to think about. Um, I think maybe just for specific kinds of research, we might need to flesh those out into better questions that sort of get people thinking a little bit more deeply about, you know, is there a potential harm if I do something in a different way? So I think it is just maximizing things that we're already using and just using them a little bit more effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in addition to that, the on the challenge around the kind of a DMP and ethics is that ethics is quite often at the start of the project and you get it once and you yeah. may not have thought through, whereas DMP, the idea is you constantly update it, so as the project develops and the kind of start collecting data, you can reflect on it more, so it's kind of the balance of where, where do you pick these up, and, and then once ethics has been obtained, then how do you, it's very difficult, or, or researchers are very, uh, not that keen to actually get ethics again, if they've, <laughs> if they've had a chance to review, um, so it's important we get that lined up nice and early in the project. Do you think that it would be helpful to have uh, more ethical reviews during the, uh, yeah, so the, the, it's not necessary. If you have a good DMP, you can put the ethical review several times into it, or yeah, maybe it's not only, it has to be done once in the beginning. Yeah, it has to be a continuous process following the DMP, no? It would make sense for certain projects. Yeah. Certainly. I, th I, I would agree, I think, I wouldn't say as a blanket statement, every time you update your DMP, you should have another ethical review. I think the resources would be difficult to, <laughs> to make that happen. But I do think that if you are, as you go along flagging up that you are a project that would benefit from periodic ethical reviews, I think that should definitely be an option. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, yeah, like Chris said, that's a really good point because often the ethics is a one-off, whereas the DMP can become a space where, okay, now it's time to share my data and then let's just remind ourselves that we're working towards these principles and, yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot something, something very important. We have to report back to the room and uh, you all speak better English than me. Uh, you all know better the subject than me. So any volunteer who wish to report back to the group? I, I make my notes uh, to the document, so you can use the document. Anybody? Yeah, I don't mind. I, I don't mind doing it. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, because I don't like when the chair speak and the other people are listeners. You have better <laughs> ideas. Yeah, so you have to speak. Chris, you have okay. got the task. 
I yeah, I don't think I've got better English than you. But I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah. I make notes. I make notes in the implementing the care principle document, so you can use it. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'll happy to report back. Wonderful. Okay, anything else on this minimizing and maximizing benefits? I think that's one of the what I made the notes for whom intended unintended harms uh, through the life cycle and DMP is uh, requires the periodic ethical review. So I think the DMP is just a wonderful opportunity for that. Anything else to the point one or sh shall we go to the next point? We have got oh, only two minutes yeah, to discuss a bit the justice maybe or the future use. You can choose. I think um, future use is such a complex topic. Um, obviously, for justice, it's very important. Um, but in terms of future use, like projecting what data you may collect, what it could be used for in the future, who has access to it, um, how even research outputs can be um, interpreted or used by other scholars, so maybe not even the data itself. Maybe back to the MP set if we get into into that in part. Yeah, I'm not sure how DMPs are dealing with the very long term archive, yeah, because we are talking about maybe in century time someone wish to use. Hmm? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, I think I was at a session yesterday and I'll need to dig out the title and all the, the speakers' information, but they were showing nice tags that they had at the repository level. And these were machi machine readable things that I think could be displayed and they very much kind of reflected some of the things that are in the care principles. Um, and, and those kind of things I think are the sort of things we want to see attached to data when they go to a repository and helping to inform reuse. So I'll try to dig that out and add it to the notes. Yeah, it's the TK labels, the traditional knowledge yeah. labels. That's so that <laughs> Yeah, that could easily be a criteria in a repository, the ability to attach TK labels in bed. It's called traditional? Traditional knowledge labels. Knowledge. Okay. Um, and they become part of the metadata. Okay, but the future use requires a very good uh, repositories with the very, very good metadata uh, and uh, I, yeah, just for my note. Good. I put also to the notes that uh, we discussed the SDGs, uh, maybe as a um, Maybe it's a very much, very much ethical issue that the care principles about the ethic, as well the SDGs in many ways are so interconnected. The two probably could be a good uh, part of ethic. If you would like. mm -hmm. Anything else for the justice or for the future use? Any I was just going to say quickly, um, today I had a meeting with some researchers at Morgan Uni and one of the things we discussed in terms of future use or past data collection, maybe from decades ago, is the way in which um, Indigenous communities might engage with that themselves. So perhaps, um, so today we were um, talking about research data that had been collected in 1910, 1920s and 60s and 70s and how present day Indigenous communities um, sometimes might choose to step away from it for various reasons, um, just as they might choose and want to engage with it in the present day, mm -hmm. which I hadn't thought about before, but I thought was very interesting. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. And maybe before we go back uh, in one, yeah, one minute, we have to go back uh, mm -hmm. for justice and for future use. What do you think? Is it policy, technical or both? Both. <laughs> Everything is both, okay? Everything is both, yeah. <laughs> yeah but fine, it's good to know. I think that now it's absolutely the time to go back and then I will ask Chris to introduce the thing. If you wish to use the notes, I can share the notes. Yeah, so then you can see them.
I hope that so everyone I think can see that. I think uh, so. Yeah. So thanks very much for being with me, and then we go back to help Chris to introduce the the the, the ideas. Yeah. Okay.